is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We're going to do a video for you guys today about the Grey Knight Deployment in 10th Edition. So the main point of this video is to make sure that you're getting as the best second days you possibly can to get the, the game going and get points on your side. I went over this with a couple of the Patreons up on the Patreon page, and it said it changed their play style. So anytime that you deploy your army, you always want to have secondaries in the back of your head. So with Grey Knights, we have one of the best secondary armies in the game. Uh, so anytime you're going against your opponent, you always want to kill their secondaries because all of our units are secondaries. It's great. So we're going to go over this video on how to deploy, what your turn one looks like, and kind of different army strategies that you want to do to make sure that you're you're besting your opponent in uh, the 10th edition format. So I have a, a video set up for you guys already. It's going to be a deployment uh, tabletop going over the top uh video camera and then we're going to go over the movement and where you're going to be able to put all your guys on turn one just to give you an example of going first or going second so here's an example of when we first look at the the battle setup we set up all of our deployment already this is just a list that i've been running um the past couple games it does have a land raider this is supposed to be a, a regular land raider not a land raider uh, crusader uh but it does do pretty well we actually have a tech priest or two tech priests in the list now the people that are off the board right now the ones that are in reserves which is mainly Drago, uh, the Terminators, so they can come down with Deep Strike. And we have a unit of Interceptors in the Land Raider. Now this could be a Rhino, this could be nothing, you can take the Land Raider out, it's completely up to you. Uh, but those are the guys in reserves. Also a unit of Inquisitor Henchman is also in reserve, so that's the list. So what we're doing here is we're basically setting up so that way we can get the worst secondaries turn one and still get points. Now here's some secondaries that you're gonna be looking for. You're basically gonna be looking for these main secondaries to try and score. The secondaries that you're mainly looking for, there's actually most of them are going to be shitty on the turn one, or you are going to have to plan for them to get it. So the first one is going to be cleanse. Cleanse is one where you have to control uh, one of the ejector markers outside of your deployment zone to try and do an action on it. And if you do two of them, which is your goal, you're going to get five points. So that's going to be one that you can focus on. Now, how to get cleanse here is pretty simple. So if we go first, we have our um, strikes that get pregame moves. They're basically going to pregame move uh, up to the center, uh, make that sticky, and then do cleanse. And then we have our interceptors, which are going to be the second unit to try and do secondaries on turn one. They can either hop out of the rhino uh, 15 inches, they can advance and do one CP to uh, do an action, or they can just basically uh, hop out and try and get on that table quarter. So that's going to be the cleanse one. Tempting target, uh, when you secure no man's, or secure the mission, draw your opponents, must select one enemy marker in no man's land. So, so they pick one of these three objective markers, your goal is to try and get there as soon as possible. If you can control it, you get five points. That's a pretty simple one. Investigate signals. This one's going to be probably max of four if you're playing Grey Knights or six if you're uh, going second. So going second, you're able to pick up your guys, go into teleport assault, and basically put them all in the corners of the deployment zone. But in this one, for investigate signals, you mainly want to align at least two borders up if you're going first. For us, we actually lined up within 30 inches of the, of the table head over here. So now my land raider is 30 inches away, so that way my guys can get out, advance, and then be wholly within nine inches of that corner uh, to get investigate signals with my uh, interceptors. And then my assassin is back here to try and move back, be within nine inches, and get investigate signal. So I actually was messing this one up a lot when it first came out. I didn't have enough people to get two. I only really had one, but most of the time it was my paladin, 700 point paladin unit, deep striking within a corner to do investigate signal. So you always wanna kind of plan for this one as well. Behind enemy lines will be kind of hard to get on turn one. If you have great knights, you can then teleport assault, try and get down, uh, come within three inches, and then do teleport assault. So this one is really good if you go second uh, for Grey Knights, but if you go first, it's gonna be really hard to try and get across the table uh, in the deployment zone because you don't wanna just sacrifice unit for, for two points. Um, and then we got extend battle lines at the end of your turn if you control one or more objective markers in your own deployment zone and one in no man's land. This is one of the easiest ones to get. Uh, so basically you just control your home field objective and then you have to hop out and control the center, which strikes are be really, really good for that on turn one. Engage in all fronts, another kind of difficult one on turn one, especially if you're, if you're Grey Knights and you go second, all of these ones are achievable, but with uh, engage in all fronts, you have to be wholly within uh, the table quarters, four of them to get five, uh, and then for three of them, you get four, three. So you get three or five. So three points, try and get on turn one. You're gonna have to advance your unit uh, probably 11, 12 inches into this corner, maybe your Paladins. 
but that way they still have sigil so if they do get shot at you can teleport them away uh, and then you have your interceptors again going up to the top to get sit on the point and your strikes they're basically coming back or going forward to try and get on the objective to make it sticky that's going to be like your move for engaging all fronts on turn one. If you're turn two, you basically just pick up three units, strike stay on the table to make that uh, sticky, and then you basically could put the interceptors again on that corner. You can deep strike one in this corner, and then you can come within three inches in their corner to get engaged in all fronts on all, on all four. So that one's pretty easy for us if we go second. Secure no man's land. We basically have to control two objectives in no man's land. That one's pretty simple. We move the strikes up, control the center. Uh, we put the interceptors on that side of the wall up top there, so that way they control the top. Uh, and then that'll be the two points in no man's land. Deploy teleport homers. If you do get this one, it's very easy for Grey Knights uh, because we can come down within three inches in the deployment zone. But uh, if you're wholly within the center or you're within six inches of the center, you can get three points still. So it's an easy three points with your strike squad to basically just pregame move, get on the center, uh, make it sticky, and then do teleport homers for three points. Then finally, Aerial Denial, another really good one for us uh, going first or second. Um, this one is really good because you could do same thing with strikes. Strikes are mainly there to do the secondaries for you. If they die too soon, it's it's not good. You want to keep your strikes alive till the end of the game if you can. And the reason is because they're doing the most secondaries for you. They're basically made to do secondaries. They can teleport assault. They can advance six. They can deep strike. Um, they get sticky objectives. They're opsec two. Uh, they're, they're just they're two up safe. <laughs> so they're really good at doing secondaries for us. So strikes are going to be the best ones. Uh, for a secondary game. Now the other ones uh, that I've picked out, there's only seven of them uh, out of 16 that are basically kill secondary. So these are going to be the ones that are kind of harder to do uh, for us just because we're not going to have a lot of line of sight turn one and turn two. We're going to have to plan for this, like bring it down. It's going to be kind of hard for Grey Knights. Storm Hostile Objective, that one could be pretty easy as long as we come down uh, within three. Defend Stronghold, this one's the most boring one as long as you can defend your Stronghold. Capture Enemy Outpost, this one's super fun for Grey Knights. If we get this turn one and we're going first, it's going to be very hard. If we get it uh, going second, we can basically deep strike all of our Paladins or, you know, Drago if they're in second turn, coming down, getting on the backfield. If you have first of the fray Libby, that's basically three, 15, 16, 17 OPSEC unit of a six-man unit coming down on an objective and stealing an objective. Uh, so that could be done on turn one if you have first of the fray and come down within three inches. Capture enemy outpost, super fun for Grey Knights. Assassinate, again, kind of hard because you have to pick out characters. We don't have a lot of precision in the army. No prisoners, you just have to kill people. And then overwhelming force is each time a unit has started on a, a range of objective marker, this one's kind of niche because if they don't start on the objective, you can't basically kill them. Uh, so if you're going first and you don't have any sticky, you technically don't have to start on your objective. So that way if they pull this one and they have out of line of sight shooting, you don't want to give them free points. So if I have a unit on the objective and I'm and I don't have sticky, especially my my gray knights, like they have sticky. But if you're playing an army that doesn't have sticky, you're you don't want to give them free points. So think of this one if you're talking about secondaries and trying to deny secondary points. Let's go back to the overhead view. You can see the setup. So we have our paladins right here. The paladins, everything is basically behind a wall. So that way on turn one, if you don't get it, you basically can move your strikes back behind the wall. So Holy within six inches puts me all the way in the center here. So these guys are basically just back up on the other side of the wall because of their scout move. So they want to be on the objective. So this guy's going to move six inches onto the objective and make this sticky. And then these guys are basically back up on the other side of this wall. So that way, all they have to see is basically nothing. Like they can't see anybody in my army. All right. So uh, if we have turn one, then the strikes, depending on what we get, let's say we get cleanse and uh, let's go shitty one and Oh, we'll practice too. So we get Aerial Denial and Cleanse. So that's actually a perfect one for us turn one because these strikes are able to pregame move six inches up here. So this is just going to go six inches. You're going to get onto the objective to make it sticky because we want to make at least one of these sticky turn one. You might be able to kind of branch it out. I, don't th I think the unit's too small to get all the way on both objectives. But Aerial Denial, they then go wholly within six inches of the center. That'll put us like here, 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 and here. And again, I don't want to move forward because that's giving them a charge. With Grey Knights, we want to stay nine inches away because they have to basically make a nine inch charge to get to us. If they come within nine inches, we can then miss the Deimos out of the fray and get basically take them off the table. So I don't want to basically move them completely within the center of the, object of the 
table, I want to be wholly within six, inch, six inches, so as far back as I possibly can. Now they're going to cleanse on that objective. Now these interceptors up here, we measured this, so where they, they could hop out 15 inches and be at least one person on this objective, and we don't have to advance for one CP. So they're basically hopping out three from the, from the Rhino, or the Landerator, and then they're moving 12 to be 15 inches on this side of the table. So they basically get over there and they're able to do cleanse as well for free without having to spend a CP. So that's going to be cleanse, cleanse, aerial denial, everything else is basically waiting until turn two because then we get to pick up all the guys and move them somewhere else. So for this turn, let's say I don't have any line of sight with my lane raider, so he's going to be like staying back uh, for safety. Uh, we have nothing over here that we can shoot. These guys can't advance and shoot because there's nothing over here. Um, so that would be our turn one. And then basically I would pass turn, uh, it would be a five minute turn. I would get five for cleanse and I would get five for error denial. Perfect, perfect turn one, a uh, really good way to start the turn. Now if we get something um, like any one of these other ones that we just went behind, you'll be able to do. So for example, if I put investigate signals, these guys would have had to spend one CP, get wholly within nine inches of this table quarter. So that way they could do investigate signal. Uh, the land raider can, can scooch up a little bit. These uh, purifiers are within 12 inches of um, this board edge, so they're going to basically hop up 12. We'll put one on the objective, kind of spread them out back here, put the rest of them behind here. Uh, they're just basically going to control that, so that way you can control two in no man's land, uh, investigate signals, and the strikes are doing the same exact thing turn one, uh, so that way they can scout move up and then get on the objective. Um, and then that'll be our, that'll be our turn one. The, uh, Paladins can basically just sit there because they're waiting to be teleport assaulted. The assassin can sit there to be uh, waiting for teleport assaulted. Your tech marine can be within three inches of the land raider and then block out nine inches of the backfield. So that way they can't get in uh, the backfield because, because if your assassin goes up and teleport assault, you still need something to stay back here uh, to block out the backfield for, for you guys. So everything is basically blocked on this side of the table. Can't come in unless you're coming in on this side over here uh, or up there. So that'd be our turn one. Now, if they do shoot the, the crows or the purifiers, I kind of want them to die quickly. So if they kill at least one of them, now my whole army hits on twos. They're very more effective if the whole, if the whole unit hits on twos. And if they kill five or six guys, they're gonna get plus one to wound uh, for the unit. So it's not bad if, if they kind of kill one or two guys on turn one. You, de want, you definitely want to spend armor contempt. They're gonna get cover and then armor contempt. So they're gonna have a two up, they're gonna ignore AP two weapons. Uh, and then they're going to go up to a three up for anything AP three. So you can kill some guys if, if if they have a lot of firepower coming that way. You basically just remove the guys that are in line of sight, keep the guys that are out of line of sight, and then just wait a turn so that way you can teleport assault them and put them out somewhere else. So that'll be uh, the first couple. Uh, that's be that's going to be turn one. If you go second, it's a little bit different. It really just depends on what you get because now we're very aggressive. If they move up, we have a lot of people forward, so that way they can either move up, shoot, and charge. You can pick people up if they're too far away and teleport assault them all over the table. Uh, and then if you're going second and you teleport assault your big paladin unit, which is mostly what you do, and your purifier unit, you basically pick them up. You can then, for the purifier units, drop them within three inches and just nuke some infantry off the table. And then the paladins, they can basically come down all the way in this corner, sit on an objective, shoot this way, and then they can be defensive because they have uh, sigil. So if they shoot you, you can either sigil somewhere that they're going to be, uh, or sigil behind this wall so that way you can't be shot at again and then next turn you can move up and then charge their uh, their back line. So sigil is very good <laughs> for the paladin blob. So let's go back to the main screen. So that, that was a quick video guys on what you're going to be doing for turn one for Grey Knights. Hopefully videos like this help you. I definitely want to leave in the comments below on what you liked, what you didn't like, what could we improve on. And there's going to be a lot more tactical videos coming up on the channel for all the armies that we play. We do, we are recruiting other dirtbags to come on the channel to do other insights on different types of armies. So even if you play Space Marines, Tau, Eldar, all these different armies, like you're going to be able to come to the channel and see everything, a plethora of armies to play. So a lot of stuff coming up to dirtbags. If you do want to support the channel, head over to Patreon. There's a lot of stuff up on Patreon. All these videos go first to Patreon. Uh, and also there's a competitive dirtbag where you guys get to message me one-on-one. -on -one. We go over lists, list ideas, tactics, uh, anything you want to talk about, as well as the Grandmaster. I play videos or tactical videos that you guys want to see specifically that you suggest for being a grandmaster. Also, we set up calls for coaching one-on-one -on -one through Discord. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. And if you're going to LVO, definitely come up and say hi because uh, I will be this year, this year playing Chaos Space Marines. Appreciate it. Good luck. <laughs> and we'll see you in another video soon.
What's up, Jets? 40K Dirtbags. So we got a bunch of stuff that we're gonna be selling up on the channel. Uh, we're constantly getting uh, updated dice for the Dirtbag logo on it. Those are gonna be sold for a dollar each. If you guys are interested, hit me up on Discord. And also all of the stickers are sold on Discord as well. Usually you can buy the stickers and dice at the same time. We ship globally, so that's really good. That's the benefit of you know buying it through us, as well as they're all custom logos. You can't get these anywhere else. There's gonna be more to come. Give suggestions in the comments below or over at Discord on what new stickers or uh, people they want me to create, as well as the objective markers that are provided through 3D6 Wargaming. The link is in the bottom of every single video that's out on YouTube. And also with everything that's coming up, there's also um, models that we 3D print uh, to give to you guys. All the models on the screen over here are available for sale. Uh, they aren't officially GD, GW models, they are proxies. Uh, they just can stand in for any models you guys play on the tabletop. So appreciate all the support. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hopefully you, you donate and support to the channel to grow Dirtbag Nation, but if not, no worries. Uh, the like, subscribe is just as good. Appreciate it guys, good luck, and we'll see you in another video soon.